Frank, what are you doing here? I need you. Look, I'm retired, okay? You haven't killed anybody in months. That's a positive thing. They're coming. I can feel it. You are driving me nuts, Marvin. Listen, if it makes you feel better, bring the girl. I'm not gonna bring the girl anywhere, all right? Don't bring the girl where? Huh. Red 2 pays homage to all the action movies that had come before it. And these retired, extremely dangerous black ops characters, you're, you're sort of celebrating them. There was a big break between uh, the first Red and Red 2. And when we all got back together, it was as if we had just been working together a couple days prior. Everybody just came back and got back into character, and we added some more characters. That was the great charm of the first one. It managed to appeal across ages and also across the sexes, and, and that's quite, you know, that's sort of lightning in a bottle stuff. I think really our goal was to provide the audience with a bigger and more expansive experience. Last chance, Frank. Taking Sarah home. Frank Moses has now made the decision that he has to retire because he has to keep Sarah safe and he can't involve her in his life and he can't have the life he used to have. Bruce has a great sense of tone and as an actor, he has that ability to be really funny and also be really tough. So he knows the balance within himself and it's a good sort of barometer for the movie. What is it? Mr. Moses, your flag retired extremely dangerous. Frank is retired and accepts his fate. And if the company hadn't tried to come after him, I think he'd still been wherever he was. Are you having fun yet? I'll let you know when I start having fun. There's two sides to Frank Moses. When it comes to his relationship, that's his Achilles heel. When it comes to action, he's Superman. He's a very tough, committed, brilliant black operative, but he's a disaster as a husband or a boyfriend. And I still do this kind of awkward, oh God, I just can't figure out uh, romance. So that's fun. You gave her a gun. It is America, Frank. We always believed Marvin was going to have a scene-stealing role because John is a really unique actor in so many ways. Stop cutting wires! I knew we were going to die! John Malkovich is out of his mind as this character, and he gives me romantic advice all through the film because my character just can't figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. Frank, can I give you a little advice about no, women? No, absolutely not! I will shoot you. I will shoot you in the liver. John Malkovich is the one guy who thinks he knows exactly what you need to have a good relationship, and he's out of his mind. But I love characters who are crazy who speak the truth, and he actually does. So his advice is not bad advice. It just is coming from someone who is completely distrustful. Marvin, as Bruce's character, and Helen's are all retired assassins who do various things with their lives or nothing with their lives. Marvin, I think, just kind of lives underground and spends his time worrying about drones and being pretty paranoid. He was someone who the CIA had used as a kind of guinea pig and dosed him with, with pretty big quantities of LSD over, I think, about a decade-long period. 96 hours ago, somebody posted a document on the internet that said you and I took part in an operation called Nightshade back in 79. That's why you fake died? Yeah. The chatter went through the roof. And Marvin just kind of comes out of nowhere and tries to warn Frank that they're coming after him and they're watching him. We don't quite know who they is. I'm not hanging out in some bunker while you slink around and save the planet with dusky international femme fatales. Dusky? dark smoldering. I know what it means, Marvin. Mary Louise comes to Paris with uh, Frank and Marvin and immediately encounters an ex-lover who is gorgeous, but even more significantly is a peer of her boyfriend. She's cute. What did you find in Nebraska? Can't we just kill her? And I think that's actually what threatens her more than anything is the fact that Bruce looks at Catherine Zeta Jones's character as capable, and he looks at Mary Louise's character and says, oh, I have to protect you, I gotta put you off the side. I think that drives her crazy. It's a different thing for Mary Louise to play, but she reveled in it, I'm afraid. She has brilliant comic timing, but the, the best thing is that 
Mary Louise and Bruce together are just perfect. To watch the two of them work with each other is, it's just so symbiotic. In the sequel, it feels like Sarah's given more chances to be one of the guys, and she continually fails until she doesn't. And that's the funnest part for me of the story. It's just so ingenuous and so earnest. I still got this! And so wants to be one of them and wants adventure. <laughs> she wants to be in the gang. And in the first film, I, I, I spent the whole time just trying to keep her safe and protect her and keep her out of harm's way and keep her out of the whole world of the CIA. And that's really what the premise of this film is, is how she gets to be part of the gang and to and to use weapons and to, and to do things that are big tasks in the world of the CIA. She could make out with this guy, too. Pretty much when she doesn't know what else to do, she kind of makes out with someone. I think she just, rather than shoot them or kill them, well, I could just kiss them. She doesn't have a lot at her disposal to kind of, you know, she's not a great spy. She's not a good liar. She doesn't really think ahead. What are you doing kissing this guy? So it's like, that's about all she has. MI6 has just given me a contract to kill you. Apparently you're number one on Interpol's most wanted. What did you say? It's important to enjoy life while you still can. She's a balanced, strangely perverse, but balanced individual because she acknowledges that you could die at any moment and her relationship is deeply loving and wonderful because it's based on the fact that they might kill each other at any moment. We find it really fun to say, okay, what other crazy thing can we have Helen Mirren do that you know, you've never seen her do? Hello, I have an appointment. So she's firing guns, she's uh, got a sniper rifle, she's blowing up cars. We try to do as much as possible to make you laugh. And also, what's great is she's such a good actor that she stays right in. She was quite ladylike in the first movie. I think she's possibly a little less ladylike. Cute. <gasps> Not so much of the old, if you don't mind. Now she's very happily engaged back in the old life. Not altogether legally, I don't think, but she's back in action. How could she have possibly found us? As I called her and told her we were coming. Almiran got her wings in the first film when she was firing this big, huge automatic weapon. And she's a great marksman in the film. And uh, she's back doing that and does really cool weapons scenes and somehow makes it look really sexy. Helen's a lady and she's broad and she's awesome. She's just kind of what you would want her to be, actually. What the hell is that? That, my dear boy, is an antidote to the most powerful nerve agent ever created. Look. It's astounding to have him in this movie. And the first time I met him, he said, please call me Tony. So Tony would send me emails. Well, what if he wore these shoes? What if it was loosely based on the Cambridge Five, I think? There were famous double agents in London, England, who went over to the other side during the Cold War. Well, the possibilities of what we can do with him are great. And like Helen, actually, we're doing a lot of things where we know what the audience expectation is or, or sense of who he is. And then we go, this, nope, and we turn it right on you. So he gets to do some things in this movie that take advantage of, his, of the baggage of who he is, and they also let him do things he doesn't often get to do. When you mess with me, buddy, this is what you get. When they meet me, I, he's completely off his head. Not in a dangerous way, but extremely eccentric. Frank Moses, my dear fellow, how are you? Oh, sports, so glad to see you. So glad you came by. We've been expecting you, haven't we, fellas? And they don't know what they've got on their hands. He's a loose cannon. He doesn't seem to know where he is or who he is. More than a few times, we all failed to do our work off camera because we were just watching Tony do the most remarkable things and funny and just right for his character. I wanted to make him very eccentric. He's so baffled. And I think underneath that lie depths of such terrible consequences. That's what I like to develop is to not act the thing that is going to be obvious, to go the opposite direction, in fact, and find a new way of playing the bad guy. Hello, Frank. Who 
is she? Trouble. Mm -hmm. How are things? Yeah, Frank, how are things? Catherine Zeta Jones, as Frank's old flame, just committed to this through this amazing costume. She's deadly looking in this black slinky costume with this black hat. She really makes you feel that she's really done this spy thing a lot, and she's very capable, in fact, very confident at what it is. And I think that gives it a lot of credibility. Katya is a Russian spy, counterintelligent, with a history with uh, Frank Moses. You'd be like the old days, Frank. I hate her so much. She's a ball breaker, <laughs> if I want of a better word. She's dangerous killer who happens to be a Russian general spy. And she steps back into my life, and Eric and John Hover wrote a, a great line for her where, where she is referred to as uh, Frank Moses' kryptonite. Frank, what are you doing? She's kryptonite. What are you doing? I'll handle it. Are you sure? Which is fun and funny and kind of explains the whole thing of how she comes in and tries to derail mine and Mary Louise's romance. I think Frank as a man succumbs to her many other talents and sometimes forgets exactly what she does for a living. And he knows what she does. But it's like getting drawn into the, the spider's web. And he just loses it. Kev. Feel my eye. And so um, I'm able to get the information I need in a very nice, seductive way. We need a new plan for Moses. I need you to approve a specialist. Han Cho Bai, he's the best. Young Han is an amazing presence. He's statuesque, he's chiseled, he is an incredible dramatic actor, and he's got a great sense of humor. It's an interesting combination to put all these different players together. Han is really a cool character. He was an uh, agent for Korea, and uh, somehow Frank framed me so Han couldn't uh, work anymore. You dead yet, Moses? Not yet! All he could do was just kill people or spying, so he became one of the best killers. Please tell me that's a stick of dynamite in your pocket. I'm saving it for emergency. Well, this is kind of an emergency, isn't it? There's not many movies that are made where you have this amount and this caliber of actors all in together. And this movie has so many elements. It has the action, it has the poignancy, and it has so much comedy in it. If there's one thing I know, it's women and covert ops. That's two things. There's multiple stories happening all at the same time in this film. And it's just, it's just fun to watch. Fun to be off camera watching everybody do their stuff. It's all woven together with a bunch of funny people and great, great actors who just show up and bring laugh out loud scenes to it. Saving the world! Nastrovia! Nastrovia! Budim, the, the 